We thank you for being here this morning again to worship God, to entertain Him in our lives, to glorify His name, to worship Him in everything we do and say. Psalm 100 says, Shout with glory to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us. We are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. Enter His gates with thanksgiving. Go into His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him and praise His name. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever. And His faithfulness continues to each generation. Never stops. Never ending. Colossians 3 tells us why we do this. Since you have been raised to a new life with Christ, set your light sights on the realities of heaven. For Christ sets in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. For you died to this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in his glory. This is the true wonder of worshiping God. That he is allowing each one of us that glimpse right now. And he says, come follow me. Do we hesitate? Do we step back? Or do you say, maybe tomorrow? Maybe tomorrow. But scripture tells us tomorrow may never come. Today's the day. Be ready anyway. So as we start this morning, we're going to give praise to God real quick. Father, we come before you. We bow before you. May we give our lives totally to you. May we worship you with all praise and honor, knowing the sacrifice, knowing the free gift of Christ, knowing all these things, that without you we are still in the darkness. Lord, draw us to the light. We praise you that your light shines unceasingly, that your faithfulness is untold, that all things about you are away and above and beyond. Father, thank you for this time that we can just take a quick glimpse that it might urge us on to seek you, to seek that relationship and just the glory and honor in that to bow our lives to you. Father, thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. So this series of worship has brought out some very interesting and probably more questions than we've had in some of our other series. Because we get so disillusioned sometimes about worship being a duty or a job or something else in our lives rather than being our lives totally. We get sidetracked to make these things happen. We get focused on different parts of worship rather than focusing on Christ, who all worship should go to. And we thank Him, praise Him daily that literally He opened the eyes of our hearts that we may see this. That we may yearn for it. That we may seek it out to honor and glorify His name. We started in Romans 12, 1 and 2. that says, give your bodies the total sacrifice. But that means every ounce of us, our thinking, our desires, 
our prayers, every last thing about us should be the sacrifice and the worship of God. Not to get focused on one thing, but to get focused in God in all things. All things. We started out with everyone worships something. God gave us that desire in our hearts to worship Him. We're the ones that gets sidetracked into worshiping other things rather than God. And yet if we just turn back to Him, turn our focus on to Him, that desire is strengthened and given to Him in all of these things. Because most times, the things we worship most in our lives are me. Self. Because it's always something I've got to give up for the Lord. And yet we should give up everything for the Lord. So if we keep our eyes on Christ, the true destination the true thought of who we're worshiping, God the Father, Jesus Christ the Savior and the Holy Spirit, then our mind's eye will be self and will get the focus off of us. And in this one, just as well as the others, we turn to Christ. It's got to be a worship of relationship. We can't hardly get into the whole crux of worship if we don't seek out the relationship with the God and the Christ who saved us. Our focus has got to be on Him. Again, true worship puts the focus on why. Why do we do it? Because again, it's Christ Jesus who gave up, who sacrificed his life, his all for us. And again, true worship puts the focus on God. Every last thought. And God never sleeps. I can't tell what you're thinking right now. You can't tell what I'm thinking. But God knows every thought, every action, and guess what? He knows it before it even happens. Let's focus on God, keep everything right in our minds, keep these things going straight. Jesus Christ, God the Father, is the all in our lives. We started out with prayer, music, knowledge, money, and today we'll be focusing on time. But remember, this is just a short list. And they're not in any order. One's not greater than the other. And we can't focus on one and not the other. Because each one, each and every one, has to be combined with the others to give God the glory. He didn't say, if you just do this, if you just tithe, you will be okay. If you just read scripture, you'll be okay. Each one of these, each one of these has a place. But they all have to be combined in Christ. Each and every one, each and every way. Each one will enhance the next one. For usually, without one or the other, we have left something up out in our worship. To God. We have left it out, focusing on one thing. Focusing on one thing. There's lots of ways to worship God. All of them will transform you if you let your mind be transformed by Him. We have to focus on keeping God the priority. Remember, 
This is a short lift of many ways to worship God. But if we don't worship him, none of this makes any difference. Keep him the focus. Keep him the number one. We started off with uh, each uh, lesson, each Sunday had a, a final thought. Um, each one of these final thoughts, if you have kept your notes, if you have delved into your notes, each one of these has a strategic plan to help us in each one of these worship areas. Music, knowledge, money, prayer, and the daytime service. If you would take these home, look at them, concentrate on them, bring it alive in your life at home, through scripture, through prayer, through knowledge, all of these things brought together to honor and glorify God the Father. Today as we start, we're going to look at time and service. What does that look like in our lives? Time and service. One of the hardest things for us to give up sometimes, even above money, even above all these other material things is life. One of the hardest things for us to give up is our time. So we'll look at a video at this time with some good solid thought on what time and service looks like. Good morning, Faith Journey Church. I'm Evan Baer and this is my wife, Shauna. We've been attending church here since January, 2022. After attending for a short while, we were offered an opportunity to serve the Lord with our time by being part of the greeting team. We accepted that offer graciously and humbly. We were honored. And that's how we came to worship the Lord with our time. I never really thought about service as a form of worship to God. I always considered it as fulfilling a need for the function of the church. However, the more I have volunteered and served, the more I realize it truly is an act of worship. The opportunities I have had to serve the church have been a real blessing in my life. I have enjoyed greeting and meeting all of you as you walk through the doors. I enjoy all of the conversations and the occasional hugs. And I enjoy the fellowship in the foyer as people mill around. I am dedicated to being a friendly and inviting greeter to the visitors who join us as I know how important it is for people to feel welcomed and wanted. Greeting gave me the opportunity to serve God and our church in other ways. I was able to help with some funerals through fruit prep and serving. What an amazing experience that was to give a tiny bit of my time and love to someone in need who was not even aware who was serving them. In my opinion, that is the best way to give or serve, behind the scenes or incognito. Every now and then, I get a chance to help Evan with his projects at the church. I really enjoyed this time together with him in service to God, even if all that he trusts me to do is keep him company. What a blessing it is to worship God through serving. Being on the greeting team allowed me more time and exposure to the staff and leadership of the church body, them getting to know me better as well as I them. When the building was being painted, I took on the exterior doors. This was my biggest commitment of my time and my responsibility to the church building today. I did, however, have a desire to help in the upkeep of the building and a desire to do something for God and be a part of something bigger than myself. I found myself expressing my adoration and reverence publicly and privately to be my personal act of worship. From there, giving my time to the Lord, giving my skills and experience grew to the largest area of my life that I do spend in worship. The effect on my life has been profound. It changed my relationship with Christ. It changed my knowledge of Christ. It changed my life. Working on the doors meant more time around the church staff and leaders. They were warm, wel welcoming, and gave me the feeling of belonging. This interaction led to other areas of the church property where I could serve, where I could purpose myself to do more for the Lord, where I could serve the Lord and his people. God is the object of my worship. He alone is worthy. As time has moved on, so is my ability to serve. 
I now have keys to the building and can come and go as need arises. Here working and serving, I found a niche where my worship can manifest itself authentically. Giving time to the Lord has no monetary incentive. It simply has one motive, worshiping and glorifying God by giving time out of my life in a maintenance capacity where I'm literally involved in keeping God's church in order for the worship of the saints. For God's word to go forward is the most satisfying form of worship for me. Giving time out of my life that won't come back to me means that I'm putting these pieces of my life into worship. In return, I'm in God's presence. He sees me, he hears me. There are many moments when all my thoughts, words, heart, and spirit are speaking directly to God. I begin praying and meditating on God's word. This is followed by my questions and petitions that in this environment, while I continue with the task at hand, my mind quiets and listens and waits, and I can hear the answers. Through this act of obedience, I can worship God in the spirit. We worship God in the spirit and in truth. Giving my time to God is my offering of worship, and I encourage you not to let life's busy pace shortchange you out of this one. The payoff is paramount. God bless you. God bless you. All of these testimonies that we've shown with each one of these segments of this series have been powerful to see the transformation in people's lives as they start recognizing these different forms and ways to worship in their lives. Some's done a complete turnaround in thinking, in act, in all these things to put the focus on God and less on me and my time or my money or whatever it might be. So, testimonies like this put all the honor to God. Not by about my experience or my thought or my feeling. God transforms. God is faithful to us to give us each one of these opportunities to serve Him, to to worship Him, to adore Him. Adoration, one of the greatest things we can look at from God. To give up everything He had in His death and resurrection, in His life of His Son, to free us from slavery. So many times uh, we, in our testimonies we, we, we focus on what we've done, but I think you've seen in each one of these Again, you've seen God do the work in their lives. God make that transformation in their thinking process to honor Him. As we start with time this morning, we see in Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God. To us, that's kind of when time began, as we can see it through Scripture. But God has always existed. He has no time restraints. He has always been there, and He will always be there. Um, John 1.1 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word. And it goes on to explain how nothing was made without Christ. Christ was in the beginning, before the beginning, and after the end as we know it. Isaiah 40.28 Have you ever heard, have you never understood, the Lord is the everlasting God? Without bounds, without time restraints, without everything. He is the everlasting, the all God. God has no time restraints. Scripture reveals that God lives outside the bounds of time as we know it. The high and lofty one who lives in eternity. Isaiah 57, 15. Scripture says our destiny was planned before time began. 2 Timothy 1.9, Titus 1.2. And before creation, Ephesians 1.4, 1, 1 Peter 1.20. Psalms 94, for you a thousand years are a passing day as brief as a few night hours. 
But God always knows the right time. God knew the right time in my life to open the eyes of my heart to see him. Many years ago, I did the worldly thing as we see it, and I supposedly came to Christ. But at the right time, just as Paul was on the road, at just the right time, Jesus said, okay, now look at me. And we have to say, who are you, Lord? Who are you? So God always knows the right time. Time means nothing to him, but he's always on time. He's never sleeping. He's not resting and forgot something. He always knows our thoughts. He's always right there. And sometimes I may not necessarily like that. Because I'm the one that's getting distracted by the world. And yet when I turn, God's right there. He's right there. And he's always right on time to bring it to my attention. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and saved us. Romans 5 and 6. And now at just the right time, he has revealed his message. It's interesting in my journey, my walk with Christ, is there's a big difference in when Christ said, hey, wake up, to every day of my walk when Christ is going, hey, look at this. Pay attention to this. I'll give you something new. And then we have to open our minds. We have to be transformed and let our whole being take it in to honor Christ. So, no time restraints for God, but He always knows the right time. Get to listening in your heart, your mind, your soul when God says, this is the right time for you. Our time is one of the most treasured things we can give to God, our Father. It's interesting. We, we, we can look at each one of these and say, this is the most important thing. And yet, every one of them has a place for God. But it seems in my life, time is one of the hardest things for me to give up. And yet, God gives me every second of every day to do with as he pleases. It's me that gets distracted over here and I start doing what pleases me. The idea is to grow close to God in that relationship that I am not swayed, I am not distracted by these things of the world. We hold on to it so tightly that we come before God and say, I am yours, but I'm holding on to this whatever this might be. Rather than coming before God and going, here I am. Take it up. God gives us our time just as he gives us our money. And guess what? We can't run God out of either one of them. Any of it. He's the God of all time. He's the God of a, that owns a thousand hills. We can't outgive him. So I can't give him, out give him financially, but I out, can't out give him in time. If I think I don't have time for that, and usually that's my devotion or my prayer or my reading scripture or whatever it might be, and yet God says, hey, I'm here. Pay attention. And I take that time. There's never enough time to give it all away. God just keeps giving and giving and giving. So my day that I thought was going to be cut short because, no, I have to take the time to this, so this schedule changes that. It all comes in to flow with it. Again, to God's plan, to his way. 
We need to trust him with our time. It is so dear to him because he's the one giving it. We need to trust him with it. We've got to give God our time freely and on purpose. Another struggle for me at times is to go, okay, Lord, I'm going to give you my time. Here it is. But I'm going, oh, I need to give that up freely without a second thought. We were discussing this morning a portion of it and how we always think we always confuse this giving up with the Lord or giving up something for me. And yet, here again, God was the producer of it. It was all Him. It was all His way. And yet, if we do that, and we do that on purpose every time, God is always, again, faithful. He's faithful to give to us and direct our ways. Matthew fourteen twenty three says, Jesus always found time to pray. Jesus always found time to pray to his Father. Again, one of those things that we go, oh, I just don't have time. You know, I'll get it. I'll get it at lunchtime. And then lunchtime comes around. Well, I'm just so busy and I've got this and I'll get it at supper time. Supper time comes around and the kids and the phone and this and that. I'll get it before I go to sleep. And the next thing you know, we've woken up the next morning. And guess what? We've missed that day with God. And yet when we stop and give him our time, we'll find that he's always been right there. He's patient. He's loving. He's caring. Take that in. Luke 10, 38 through 42, tells the story of Martha and Mary. Martha gave her time to busyness. Mary gave her time to Christ. Now we know that as we're walking through this world, we have all these things to do. We have jobs. We have cooking. We have cleaning. We have every last thing. But if we dedicate each one of these things to God, guess what? They'll get done. They'll get done. Let's keep our focus on Christ. John 15, 5 says, giving God our time, giving it up to God, he equips us. So when we take time to pray, when we take time to read scripture, when we take time to get on our knees, when we take time to listen, just stop and listen God equips us to walk with him. God gives us all the necessities we need to honor and glorify his name. And he gives us everything we need on this earth. He misses nothing. He knows everything we need. Isaiah 26.3 says, Time with God gives us peace and joy. And when we seek God on purpose and we give our time to him freely, we truly find the peace and joy that lives in Christ Jesus. That all that is Christ is right here for us today. God gives us time. We must use it obediently. Trust and obedience is one of the biggest keys to truly worshiping God. Trust and obey, for there's no other way, only in Christ. Trust and obey. Come to him, wantingly, willingly, freely to give up every last segment of my life for the Savior, Jesus Christ. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, Matthew 6, 33. First, 
Just like in tithing, you give of the first fruits. In time, we give God that first thought. That first prayer. The first of everything we do when we fall before him. Start the day with God. End the day with God. Walk with God throughout the day. Pray without ceasing. For Thessalonians 5.17 Walk all day with God. Walk all day with him. And when you've been talking to him all day, he will be with you in your thoughts during the night when our eyes are closed. As the deer longest for the stream of water, so I long for you, O God. Psalms 42.1 We must have a true desire for God. A true desire to seek him out and what he wants. What's his plan? He said he's made a plan for us since time beginning. Are we truly seeking out his plan? Or am I making my plan and say, well, I know that God is going to endorse this. I know he's going to okay it. Let's seek his plan. Let's seek it with such a desire that nothing else can distract us from God. For he is the only one. The time we give to God every day will directly affect the amount of Christ's light we reflect to the world in our daily journey. You know, Moses came close to God and he shined. And it's interesting, as we walk with Christ, his light shines through us. But the farther away we get from Jesus, that light starts to diminish, and it goes down. And so that's why we gather together, to encourage one another, to be the light to one another, to do all these things that the body of Christ should do for each other, to lift each other up, to be there. 2 Corinthians 6, 2. At just the right time I heard you. On the day of salvation I helped you. Indeed, the right time is now. Today is the day of salvation. Now to believers who have walked this way for years, some of those people, their eyes have been opened. The light has truly shined into their hearts even after a long period of time in church or whatever we might have called that at the time. But for that truly person who is here today, who has not just seen Christ in the light of his glory and his kingship and accepted that salvation through repentance, this says today's the day. Don't wait Give it all to Christ right now. Give it up. Let him be all that time in your life. Don't wait. Because tomorrow says, the Bible says tomorrow may never come. Now that might be scary, but... When we're looking at it through Christ's eyes, it should be scary. Because if we haven't accepted Christ, today's the day. Be ready today. Accept him today. Glorify him today. So God is all time. God is always there. He's never late. And he doesn't have any time restraints. So give up your time to Christ. The second part of that is service. If we can change that just a little bit, and we'll see it flow in here, we change it to servant. Are we a true servant of God the Father? Are we a true servant of Jesus Christ? And are we a servant to each other? 
Do we serve each other as husband and wife, brother and sister? Do we serve each other in the congregation? And do we serve the world in that sect that God has given us that ability to do, to help out, to truly be the light? To truly be the light. Scripture tells us to serve the Lord. Serve the Lord with gladness, Psalms 102. Serve God with all your heart and soul, Deuteronomy 10.12. Joshua 24.15 says, As for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. Each one of us, as true believers and followers of Christ, should have that in our house somewhere that reminds us this house, this place, wherever I'm at, I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to give to him my all. We have to realize that these are just a few verses that tells us about serving God. Just a few. If you go in there, if you want to just Google it, Way past 100 verses that just says, serve the Lord in all these ways. So it, it's out there. It's easy. <laughs> you don't have to search through each page. But guess what? Go back to this. Check it out. Check it out. You know, Paul was preaching to the Bereans in Acts, and it says, they searched the scriptures daily to make sure what Paul was preaching was the truth. And that's what we seek out of Scripture is the truth. Not a feel good, but the truth. And sometimes the truth will hit me right here because guess what? I'm the guy. Put your name in there. And at the end, you will feel good because you've given it all to Christ. Matthew 25, 35, For I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. This is part of serving. This is giving my all. That no matter what I look at, Scripture tells us, always hold your brother in higher esteem than yourself. And sometimes that's hard for us. We struggle with that area sometimes to be truly glad when that next person really gets kudos for doing a good job at something. It just hurts us sometimes. We need to not have a thought and be overjoyed when someone gets kudos every time. Romans 1210, love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Genuine affection. Sometimes hard for us. But this isn't a suggestion from God. This is what he tells us to do. 1 Peter 4.10 says, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Not to serve myself. Not to bring me to bigger stature. But to always elevate that person next to me. Galatians 5.14 says, Love your neighbor as yourself. Again, sometimes it's hard for us to do that. Even as true believers, we struggle with that sometimes. But again, it isn't a suggestion from God. It's the truth in our lives to worship and serve Him. Mark 10.45 says, For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and give His life as a ransom for others. So as we start to close this out today, my hope, my desire, my thought, 
the scripture says, give each one of these areas to God. Worship Him in your life. Do it always. Do it with reverence. Do it with reverence. You know, it's pretty easy for us to get in a state of, and we've heard it many times, I'm good. I'm good. We're only good through Jesus Christ. May we honor him. May we give him every last segment of every one of these areas of worship. And so much more. So much more. Today's final thought, Colossians 23, 24. Work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Remember, that the Lord will give you an inheritance, your reward. And the master you are serving is Christ. We cannot be the master of our own lives. Because if we are, we're serving two masters. And scripture tells us we can't. We've got to serve God. Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Take this with you today as you go home. Don't leave Christ at the front door. Take him home. If you haven't been in Scripture, open it up. Please. It is such a delight to be in the Word of God every day, every hour, every way. Paul, as he was uh, praying for the Thessalonians, he said, uh, I hope that the Lord finds you worthy of his calling. Have we truly given ourselves to Christ that would be our prayer today that we worship God in all his glory in all his wonder and all Father God as we as we leave your building as we leave your sanctuary today Father may we not leave you behind may you dwell in us as we worship you as we adore you, as we seek you. That that world out there, that is such a turmoil today, might see you through the way we love each other, as your scripture so says. Father, thank you. We praise you. May honor, glory, and power be given to your name. In the name of your Son, the blood of the cross, and his resurrection. Amen.